Hello, my dear friends, best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov. I'm a research entomologist, beekeeper and teacher. I'm studying small parasitic wasps of the superfamily Calcidoidea, Calcido wasps. They're parasitoids. And I'm studying also the family Trichogrammatidae egg parasitoids. They're indicated here on this poster. This one, this Trichogrammatidae and all these small tiny parasitoids. They belong into different families of a superfamily Calcidoidea or Calcid wasps. They're parasitic, so they're developing inside or on the body of another organism, insects or some other arthropods. So they're parasitoids. And they're very small. They're, they're size from 0.5 mm up to 1 mm, even 5 mm size of this parasitic wasp is very big one. Nevertheless, they have very interesting biology, behavior, and very interesting trophical relations between one group of organisms, which are hosts, and they are parasitoids. Parasitoids, they are feeding on hosts, they are de larvae developing on hosts, and then from hosts, the last stage, which is adult, is hatching. All these small tiny wasps are hatching from their hosts, which are the food, the meal, the larvae are eating, feeding on this meal in other insects or in other arthropods, like ticks, like some mites of a family Ixodidae. So that's why some of these parasitoids they have important role in biological control, in suppression of a population of some phytophagous insects, which may have very important impact on the development of some agricultural crops, or just forestry crops, or just native biodiversity of plants, and also just this is native community of organisms somewhere in a forest, in tropical forest, in semi-tropical forest, in deciduous forest, in semi-desert, in desert, so they spread everywhere around the world instead, except maybe just Antarctica, definitely, and Arctic. But they should exist also even on, on an island of Wrangel, somewhere far away on, on Newfoundland, on Greenland. Probably in Greenland where I have a very few collected insects from this group of calcid wasps. So if you are just biologist and will come to Newfoundland, into Greenland, and you find some green places in the summertime, in the warm time, and you can make some collecting, put in some traps like malaise traps or yellow pen traps, for collecting some insects, you could find these insects even in the sub -Arctics. But what about them in our area in Europe? We have an important role in biological control for agricultural pests, and we are interested in their biology. So today I will show you some original videos, my original videos. I just took under the microscope in different time, in different laboratories, in different countries, under different microscopes, very interesting, unique, absolutely amazing parasitoids. Some of them have never been on screen. And I'm just has a copyright to show them. And I have a pleasure to share this video files with you just as a first watchers, first viewers. Maybe someone can steal it. But I hope so. It will be a little bit copyrighted for YouTube channel at least. But nevertheless, the share of knowledge with my audience is a great pleasure because some audience becoming more or less active and can communicate with me. So you can use my email for direct communication, asking questions, because email is, uh, I check in every half an hour, just one hour on my screen of my computer, or social medias. I also presented on TikTok and Facebook and Telegram as well. If you are interested, you just check my YouTube channel with some indicators on the front page, some social media sites. Let's start from the beginning, from the videos which I took in Turkish Republic some years ago with hosts, phytophagous insects, and with parasitoids, and with some also phytophagous calcid wasps, which are very interesting, amazing, and unique. And let's explain who is it is, how they are living, and what they are feeding on. We are eating different stuff, and they are living in different conditions. So this is a pyrida. This is a caterpillar, a very common one on cabbage. It was collected on cabbage in Turkish Republic. 
So I just suspect suspected that this caterpillar was a little bit diseased, little bit ill, not so active. Probably she was parasitized by some parasitoids. Some most common parasitoid for Pioridae family, especially on cabbage, these are Braconidae parasitic wasp of family Braconidae. But they're ectopar endoparasitoids, not ectoparasitoids, some Eulophidae, ectoparasitoids, but Braconidae endoparasitoids. But finally, they're just hatching out of the body of this caterpillar and making a lot of cocoons around. So they're making white cocoons, a group of cocoons, or just white cocoons or yellow cocoons, maybe up to 20-25 specimens of small parasitic wasp of a family Braconidae genus Habrobracon can emerge from such kind of caterpillar. So if you can watch some pests, you can find some pests on cabbage, put it in a cage and watch for parasitoids. And who are these? Here we, I see two individuals, male on the top and female down there. This is a genus Bruchophagus. Bruchophagus, the species Bruchophagus saphore. This is Phytophagus wasps. The larvae is living inside the pods of saphora, such interesting seeds, which are very well distributed all around the world, especially in warm areas. So this, these pods are very common in Ankara, where I've been at this time. So I recorded this in laboratory in Ankara. Bruchophagus sophore. And here just I'm showing just the face, the face of a parasitoid of the family Bro Pteromalide, Calcid was for Pteromalide. And you can see here two like a sticks, these are antennae, and I'm, I'm trying to show down the mandibles, mandibles of this species, because mandibles are important part of adult and because adult is using mandibles to to make exit hole from the from the host so you see this female is opening mandibles opening mandibles i touch it by pin by the needle and just insects just opening mandibles just this is effect of irritation but using for mandibles to take a hole to for emergence out of hole and here this is a parasitoid of Braconidae family. This is, was collected on some flower pots. And usually this parasitoid is parasitoid of some larvae of weevils or beetles which are living inside flower pots of a family Compositae. Compositae. So by feeding on the larvae of weevils, family Curculeanidae. You see here very dark, uh, near the black wings and lone ovipositor. Lone ovipositor, this female is using for oviposition, for penetration, flower head, and putting egg through the tissue of flower head of a bubble, or just a bubble of a flower inside the larva of wheel, somewhere very deeply inside the flower. That's why. Adult is making such a deep oviposition inside. And here, just a very big group of a very tiny, very tiny weevils uh, just emerged and just died in a petri dish. They emerged from seeds of, of one interesting plant of a genus Ruta. Ruta. Because I collected seeds of this plant, Ruta, and many. After maybe two or three weeks, many weevils just hatched from seeds. And not only weevils, also some interesting parasitoids also hatched from seeds. So we were either parasitoid on larvae of weevils or phytophagus feeding on seeds inside, inside of this flower seed pod. And this is Curculeanidae family. So many parasitoids developing on this family and it's quite possible easy to collect some plants which just infected infested by curculeanidae and you see here this is individual of phytophagus calcid wasp yesterday i showed this 
as it was, but more active. This is just male, male not very active, probably nearly died because dying very quickly after emergence. And this is a genus Brucho Blastophaga, not Bruchophagus, Blastophaga of the family Agaunide. Agaunide, Phytophagus calcid wasp, developing in a fig tree, in a, in a fruit of fig tree. So you see here many very funny windless males of a Blastophaga calcid wasp. They are just hatching, mating with females, and just dying very quickly. And also they are making very long penetration hole for females, for emergence of females. They have very specially enlarged, yes, they are still alive, just very tough, very strong first pair of legs. So they are making hole just for opening the hole in a fruit of fig tree because they need to make this hole for females which are emerging after them. So, and they are wingless, very different shape, such a sexual different dimorphism between female and male. And I show you just female, just nearby in a few seconds. Yeah, this is a female, female is a black color, and with long ovipositor, with elongated, with flattened head, with antennae just in the left side, and with the wings. So this is Blastophaga psenas, Phytophagos calcid wasps, wasp, which is developing inside gulls or seeds, like a, like a seed eater inside fr fig tree fruits. So here just a group of females just already died because they are dying very quickly after the emergence. This is important but see seed feeder or just feed, seed eater inside special inside fruits of a fig tree but only inside male trees of figs this is very complicated biology of figs tree because fig trees they have a male tree and female tree so they are developing especially inside girls in fruits of male trees or fig trees and in female trees they're just eatable usually they are going to female trees, pollinate them, and just dying inside fruit bulbs. So that's why the pollination of a fig, fig of some sorts, of some races of fig, figs, pollinated races of fig trees are very important because they are making pollination of female trees or fig tree. And these are females. Each, there are many different species in Fahatse, Fahatse, of these fig trees, especially in tropics, and many definite special special fig, tree, fig wasps of a family, Agaonidae. They have a very precise specialization for different species of figs in tropics, because figs in tropics were not eatable, some eatable, some not eatable, some are very just feral and rural and wild, and with small fruits, just e eaten by animals, but they are pollinated by, by this Phytophagus wasp of a family Agaonidae, and this is Blastophaga psenas, important pollinator of fig trees, with long wings, long ovipositor, relatively long ovipositor, and, and antennae. And then bringing the pollen from male trees to the female trees and making pollination. We are bringing it either on the body, on some special cavities on the body. Some species of Agaonidae have a different morphological characters. Here we see the female of a family Braconidae, Braconidae with extended very long ovipositor and if you have to be very careful you can recognize that this ovipositor is extended with special purpose this is female which is laying eggs an egg is coming you see this is unique absolutely unique moment absolutely fantastic unique 
interesting moment egg is coming from the needle from the ovipositor you see egg is coming the elongated egg which is just increasing in the size like a bulb like a soap soap bulb no but inside inside this is will be embryo of this and will be larva of the this gabra bracon because this is a female of gabra bracon laid eggs on the body of paralyzed caterpillar eplodia interpunctella mealworm mealworm which is very common pest some in some storage products in, even in your kitchen sometimes and you see here some larvae and just nearby larvae of parasitoid habrabracon and some of them were already made a uh, white cocoons a around them because these are larvae that they're sitting on the body of caterpillar because they're ectoparasitoids they're developing outside of the body just sucking with gamma lymph the blood of the caterpillar and then are growing until the last stage and after that they're making cocoon around them a silky cocoon just for partial protection and against another parasitoids of pteromalidae family and so you see here on the top just something like a mesh like a white mesh this is a white mesh this is a cocoon just not very tough cocoon just very soft cocoon and with soft mesh mesh and you see here still larvae inside and then after making cocoon larvae will pupate larvae is very active just crawling a little bit outside of already mummified caterpillar they have completely sucked the caterpillar just only with skin skin even with some dry content as well inside and caterpillar is and here again you see just with spots larva of habrabracon parasitoid which is making cocoon around around this is a long time process maybe and it's quite visible that larva has a head and we head is producing silk and like a caterpillar of moth the same is do, doing the larva of parasitoid making cocoon for protection so she's, and she's making silk from the gland silk glands and gathering around herself with silky silky mesh just for protection and here just uh, for fun very interesting larva of antler lion of an order neuroptera neuroptera huge body huge bodies very funny shape and this is a family myrmelonide myrmelonide antlion which is this larva is sitting somewhere in a like a underground in just hunting for ants which are crawling crawling nearby so this larva is just waiting with making special hole in a in a soil usually in the sandy soil so the running ant can drop inside this hole and with this very specialized mandibles the larva of ant lion will catch will hunt for ant and will kill it and grow in feeding on it becoming pretty big and then again pupate under the ground and ant lion very 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 fragile wings will hatch from the soil from the cocoon but the, this larva has a so strange head so strange body and especially strange mandibles so elongated so long to catch the ant quickly to hunt for and quickly so if ant is kind fallen down it's not good for him and I. and here just very funny machine just for, for fun very funny machine fumigation machine fumigation car which is just sometimes i have seen in ankara very special machine what is a machine this is machine for fumigation against insects so i i just named this machine as anti-fly machine because machine is coming to the dust can nearby and you see him making a huge smoke huge smoke spraying something on a can with some rubbish even just in the daytime not only in the morning time these machines were just running around some streets even in the 
central part of Ankara and making such spray against flies because probably in a hot climate flies uh, this is a problem especially in Turkish Republic so this dust cans uh, may be polluted by its high population of flies diptera or the diptera okay after that I show you just very unique another parasitoid absolutely fantastic parasitoid big one is big one big one it's meaning just about nine millimeters or eight millimeters and what she is doing this is a female female is sitting and very attentively doing something attached to something like a piece of dust and who is just crawling nearby the crown looks like a larvae yes these are larvae and this is not a dust this is a dark bunch of eggs and from these eggs larvae is hatching larvae of first age stage larvae of first stage is just hatching and this is a parasitoid of a family calcidide calcidide calcis and these are larvae of a family stratiomide aquatic fly aquatic fly of the order diptera family stratiomide semi-aquatic fl fly larvae as uh, larvae, these larvae are living just in a mad in a water in a water stream with polluted water and we're feeding on some dust some algae and some plants in the water so that's why usually this egg mass is laid somewhere near the water i collected it near the lake in kiev in fair funny region in fair funny region famous place near the lake just on a plant and larvae should drop inside the water but here they're in petri dish then this is unique moment that larvae is just hatching and this big parasitoid laying eggs in a very small larvae very small larvae or either just inside even inside the egg before hatching larva because this is egg lar uh, egg larval pupal parasitoid you might say egg pupal parasitoid because female is laying egg inside very tiny larva or egg of stratiomys fly egg of parasitoid is very tiny and larva is still very tiny but then larva of parasitoid is growing slowly slowly during few weeks and will hatch from the last stage of development of the larva nearly after pupation larva is becoming already pretty long like a caterpillar size about two centimeters for stratiomys larva is pretty big like a large caterpillar and also just swimming near the somewhere near the surface of water before pupation pupating just near near some plants outside of water for breathing and inside this very large caterpillar is sometimes can be this unique larva larva of this parasitoid so larva will be inside the larva of fly and so that's why parasitoid is laying eggs inside small egg or small larva and hatch from the very big very big larva of stratium of a last stage of stratiomys fly and the then this parasitoid has a unique shape of third pair of legs you see so curved curved and strong female and can jump very quickly and also probably they are used also to keep toughly on a plant because some wind some wind on a so this is kind of adaptation for survival sometimes you cannot say why there are some special morphological characters of insects and animals as well so this tough very ex enlarged eggs and large femora of calcis is very unique and this is also a very unique video and here i show you funny just face of another parasitoid of family pteromalide again i show you portrait portrait of this pteromalide you see this is facet eyes big eye and this is a face of head of head small brownish 
antenna and you see again I try to show mandibles. Mandibles on the left side this is a leg. Mandibles are used for making a hole for emergence from the host. So here this is head of pteromalus under the high magnification of microscope. And now I show you some of this. As you see, the female is opening the mandibles, opening mandibles. Again, I touch with a needle and the female is just opening mandibles. And mandibles has a, some kind of a tiff, several tiffs, just segment, segment, you see. Serialized kind of serration. If this is a mandibles with some teeth, which are used like a saw to make in a hole from the host. And who is the host of this parasitoid? Okay, okay. We show you the host. Very common host of few species of pteromalidae. This one, you have recognized probably this parasitoid. And this is a bread beetle. Bread beetle, or in American audience, this is a drugstore beetle. Very common in a, not in a house, not in a dining room, but in a kitchen, in some cases. Because they're feeding on some cereals, on some flour, on dry bread, on some, on a small piece of dry bread somewhere. In a wardrobe, in a kitchen, on shelves, somewhere forgotten cakes, dry cakes. If you forget, uh, with open can, cans or just open package. So they will find, because they have a very good feeling of, a, of nice smell of bread, so they will find bread or some vegetable material and will feed on it. Larva will, they will eat it themselves and also lay eggs on these cakes. And inside cakes, in some special holes, like inside cocoons, will be developing the larvae and some parasitoids were here also in a petri dish running around of a family pteromalidae if you are attentive you can recognize here some small tiny wasps crawling around together with hosts so it was very high infestation of my laboratory culture and when we have inf uh, good infestation easy to show them in a large group so just high population of host, bread, bread beetle, and or drugstore beetle, and parasitoid of a family, pteromalidae. And the last but not the least, I show you the next parasitoid of pteromalidae family, which is feeding also on some host and sometimes even in your kitchen, because this parasitoid also attacking hosts which are common in kitchen. They, this parasitoid, this female attacking the pupa, the last stage of development of larva, after the larva and then just becoming pupa or puparium inside the pupa inside puparium. And this is pteromalide parasitoid sitting, not sitting, but Ovipositin, ovipositin laying eggs inside puparium of fruit fly, drosophila, drosophila fruit fly. And this is female, just attentively sitting and touched carefully and just used its ovipositor for egg, egg laying inside the pupa. So in here, large magnification, we see thorax, head and antenna of female how she's just making special position and also just ovipositing inside inside the puparium of a fruit fly. So this pteromalide wasp and just now you see here just checking, checking the place with the top of an abdomen, checking the place, checking the suitable convenient place for oviposition. So just making a special Positioning for checking and with the top of ovipositor checking it and sometimes also feeding after 
Yes, penetration. The host, in many cases, parasitoids are feeding on some juice, on some hemolymph, which is coming out of the body of a host. So this female also just made a hole and is feeding, you see here, feeding on the drops of hemolymph, which is coming out out of body of this puparium, but on the last, but not the least. Video we can see here under smaller magnification, but you can see here these tiny puparums, several puparums of a fruit fly, Drosophila, which is very common laboratory insect and just very common insect in the kitchen because they're coming sometimes from a street in the summertime or from the balcony and making uh, just some troubles in the kitchen. And here you see we've changed the form of ovipositor. On the left side this is o positioning of ovipositor like a tiny needle which is penetrating tiny needle from the abdomen on the left, left side of a screen. And the right side this is head with antenna. And female penetrated the shell, the shell of puparium, inside will be pupa and will lay eggs inside pupa. If this process can take about 5-10 minutes or less, depends from the suitable suitability of the host, because female always recognize this is suitable host or not, if she can recognize that host was already parasitized, has been parasitized by another female, maybe female will not use it for the purpose of oviposition, don't, to not make competition, too high competition inside one host. Because in this situation, just female is laying maybe only one or two eggs, because only one individual, only one specimen can develop inside this small pupa. You see, this pupa is not very huge, pupa is pretty small, but inside of this one pupa will develop in only one individual of this parasitoid of a family Pteromalidae. And this is unique process of ovipositioning inside the pupa of fruit fly of a genus Drosophila. And here I am just trying to make higher magnification just to show the needle, the needle of oviposition. Under the high magnification we can see even this like a tiny needle which is penetrating this is a leg and here just after focusing yes here you see this big stick this is very thin very thin tiny thin ovipositor which is penetrating the shell of you see here this is point of penetration and this needle like a sword is just moving up and down up and down just like a screw making just a hole inside the shell and then just inside the pupa. And it's not visible here because it's high magnification. Through this tiny hole, through the ovipositor, female is laying egg inside the body of a pupa, of a fruit fly. So such a very unique process and very unique behavior, very unique instinct behavior of this parasitoid, which already knows what to do after the emergence as an adult and following to instinctive behavior, searching for host, finding the host, recognizing the host and laying egg. After mating, female is laying egg. You see, and making like a screwdriver, like a screwdriver, making a hole inside the shell and even some small drops of liquid is just coming out of a on the so out of the surface, you see here. This is penetrate. Ovipositor consists not only one needle, consists of two needles. So these needles are just moving in the direction of a pupa, uh, up and down, moving up and down, making the hole like a sc screwdriver. And then through the ovipositor, eggs, eggs, two eggs or just one egg should be just only one, probably. If two, it will be kind of competition. So female will count very precisely 
but she needs to lay only one egg in one pup pupa. I'm not sure that she will lay two eggs for, for security. Probably just only one egg and then just lay egg in next one, in next pupa. But to, under, to find the parasitoid, it's possible to open the pupa and to check the parasitization, open the pupa with needles or with forceps. And under the microscope, it's possible to find eggs inside the pupa or in, after the development, it's possible to find larvae of parasitoid inside the host. So this is a very tiny, very careful process of investigation to search for larvae inside the host, inside the larva, inside the egg of host, or it needs to open the egg and possible to find eggs of parasitoid inside egg of host. Or if you open la tiny larva of host, you can find eggs or larvae of parasitoid inside the host. This is very important process to understand parasitization of host. If, par if host was parasitized or not parasitized. Okay, thank you, Dmitry, for coming. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you for interest. Thank you for watching our club of insects under the microscope. So new insects under the microscope will come soon. Very soon if we have electricity, but we should have electricity. We hope so very much. We believe in our army and today, unfortunately, there is a one year of fighting against our bloody neighbors. Despite it, we are believing to our army of Ukraine, which is fighting so hardly against aggressors. But despite it, we have opportunity to show some videos even in these harsh conditions. We have electricity now without switch off today. That's why we are continuing and say Ukraine is forever. Thank you for watching. So I switch on my big screen screen. Welcome to thy next stream for next video. So live insects, leave parasitoids under the microscope. I hope so something was interesting for you. Have not been surprised. I hope you have been surprised. If you have been surprised, subscribe to our channel. Press like, write your comments and ask your questions. If you have not been surprised, press two times on the bottom dislike. Two times to be sure that you dislike it. If you like, press one like and, and write comments with some details in English or in your own language if you like it. If you like my enthusiasm, I will repeat new stories on my channel and new streams about parasitoids, about some different insects. But parasitoids are favorite of mine. So that's why I'm trying to show them more often. And maybe I even will develop some kind of a biological entomological course for students, like a kind of entomology training with some stories about morphology, behavior of insects, or maybe kind of a master course of entomology for online students. If you are interested, write your comments in your own language or in English. I have, you know, I have, and you have also just Google Translate. It's quite easy to translate with Google Translator. Very easy. Difficult to understand English, for sure, for some not native speakers. But at least you need to learn English to have success in your life. And with English, you can find your own way to develop your career, to develop your life, and to get success. And thank you for watching. Ukraine is forever. Good luck and see you soon on my channel. Bye-bye. Subscribe to my channel. And visit Patreon page for people knows, who knows what does mean Patreon. Link is under this video. Good luck and see you soon on my channel. Bye-bye.